I think next year uh, will be the year uh, where investors in Argentina uh, will, will follow the evolution uh, of the transition. I think uh, from a credit perspective, uh, the key aspect that um, market participants will follow is the size of the fiscal deficit. Uh, the big question the market will ask if, if growth doesn't rebound, um, neither uh, structurally nor from a cyclical point of view, where the fiscal you know, account or fiscal deficit will end up uh, during, during the year. So that's the key concern uh, and challenge for, for the current administration. Uh, the government has cut taxes significantly you know, uh, during the year. The idea was to promote investments, uh, which is quite low uh, in terms of contribution to GP in Argentina. Uh, so by, by, by cutting taxes, they are also fragilizing potentially you know, the, the fiscal health. So if the economic activity doesn't rebound, the big question will be how deep the fiscal deficit uh, next year. Tied to the size of the fiscal deficit is the financing of it. So will you finance it domestically? Seemingly, if you hear the Treasury, they would rather financing, finance everything domestically. Uh, but probably Argentina, the sovereign, will be the largest you know, issuer uh, within the capital market uh, next year. You can ask yourself, uh, you know, if the sovereign will, you know, crowd out the private sector, and that must be seen. Um, last but not least, you know, tied to the, the speed of the economic activity, the impact on fiscal, the question could be also what's going to happen uh, with the uh, tax amnesty bill and how much capital could be repatriated in, in Argentina. If you don't see the dollars flowing into the country, the benefit will be on the fiscal side simply because the 10 person tax that you have to pay or the fine that you have to pay has to be converted into peso, uh, which is going to be also, you know, a potential inflow in, into the uh, local currency market. So, to be seen, but we might see one-offs, uh, and that could be another theme, you know, next year. Uh, how will the government try to improve the fiscal situation uh, via one-off items? I mentioned the uh, tax bill, but probably, you know, you might also see some privatization and the government might monetize some of the, ha the assets uh, they're holding. If you look backward, the Argentine government or previous administration were not good at delivering what they were promising. So that's what has changed and seemingly um, most of uh, the civil servants uh, or officials uh, are keen in delivering what they're promising. And, and that's, that's, I think, one of the uh, biggest change. As a result, you also see a regain in confidence, which is highly needed both for domestic consumption but also investors. And when you mean investors, it means the local reinvesting, you know, in the Argentine economy and for investors, because Argentina, you know, needs uh, capital uh, from, from abroad. If you start also looking at uh, fundamental improvements, despite the, the huge shock behind the devaluation, one can say that the transition has been quite smooth. Uh, if you, you know, uh, open up 
the, the, the currency market, if you let the currency depreciate that much, if you liberalize most of the utility prices, you would expect you know, growth to fall much more, inflation skyrocketing, uh, and you would see you know, the middle class or the poorest classes suffering much more, taking the streets uh, and, and striking. This didn't happen. So we have to give you know, the current government the credit of having managed the transition quite smoothly. So that's maybe, you know, also a positive, uh, meaning that if the current administration is successful in guaranteeing some continuity, probably the next administration will reap the benefit of what has been, you know, implemented lately, or President Macri could run a second time to go, you know, deeper into the uh, reform path. Uh, when you look at the structural, you know, improvement, um, I think one of the surprising uh, conclusion or one of the surprising impact is that inflation seemed to have peaked. Uh, and, and so there is no follow through, you know, and a spiraling effect where, you know, you would see inflation overshooting. So I think on the inflation front, uh, when you ask about fundamental improvements, uh, President Schwarzenegger with uh, his inflation targeting regime has been potentially too hawkish and probably misperceived by some investors or even, you know, some of his colleagues and peers within the government. But at least when you are changing the regime, uh, you have to be quite strict and follow some, you know, dome when it comes to, you know, uh, the, uh, the message uh, he's conveying. So central bank behavior has also to be praised. And that's one of probably uh, the best fundamental improvement uh, within the current administration. So, as I mentioned earlier, a lot is related, you know, uh, with the, the size of the fiscal deficit. And, as I said earlier, the government, the federal government, will be the largest issuer. F clearly, the biggest one. The big question will be the blend between dollar denominated and peso denominated debt. It's clearly that if the domestic yields are that attractive in nominal terms and not in real terms, you might see international investors coming into the domestic bond market. But not all might want to take the peso risk. And so there will still be, you know, enough demand uh, for, for dollar debt. The second, you know, theme or the, the, the other issues will be the provinces. And then you're going to have, you know, the big discussion between the provinces that are aligned with the central government or the federal government uh, and the ones that are more independent and have their own dynamic. So probably we're going to see the three largest provinces issuing more debt uh, in US dollar uh, next year. Last but not least, uh, on the sectors, we hope, because the, the markets, we, we haven't seen that many Argentine corporate issuers tapping the market and raising money you know, during this year. Um, we would like to see probably more energy-related issuers in Argentina, it's mainly, you know, oil, oil, and, oil and gas. Uh, clearly, the banks may raise more money, uh, trying to start the lending to the private sector. So if you start lending so that Argentines can borrow money to finance any kind of mortgage, the, se the, s the sector tied to this will be construction. So you might see household 
leverage leading to more demand for mortgages, which may also need or mean that the uh, construction and home builders and developers, you know, may raise money too. So this is, you know, the, the domino effect. Uh, tied to this, clearly if the government wants to foster investment and infrastructure spending, you know, construction might be a theme uh, in Argentina. Last but not least, agriculture, you know, uh, Argentina is, you know, uh, one of the uh, largest exporters of soybeans. So hopefully, agriculture sector might raise capital, you know, via the international capital market. So these are a bit, you know, the sectors we would like to, to see uh, tapping the international capital market next year. The biggest question here is, you know, solvency versus liquidity risk, or the boom and bust, you know, in terms of capital flows and how can this, you know, impact the capacity of a, of a country to roll over its debt. We don't see, foresee or expect, you know, the U.S. rates to skyrocket next year. So we don't expect the Fed to hike three, four, five hundred basis points at all. So when you look back in the 90s or even, you know, early 2000s, most of the EM countries had a debt profile that was or that would suffer the moment that you had a home run. I mean by this that when you have to roll over your debt and global yields go up, you end up in a vicious circle that lead to a solvency issue. And then you have to call the IMF and international lenders to guarantee the rollover you know, of your stock of debt. Now we are in a total different environment. Most of the sovereigns have lengthened the debt profile, including Argentina. Yes, Argentina has heavy redemptions in 18 and 19, but even if the Fed hikes 50, 75, 150, this, will not, this won't trigger you know, an acceleration uh, of, of default. The Argentine credit curve has normalized, upward sloping, credit curve, which doesn't show any stress or any rollover stress. If you have higher yield in the US and or a steepening of the treasury curve, you might see long dated bond prices, I mean long dated Argentine sovereign papers dropping in terms of price because you see a steepening of the yield curve in the United States. It doesn't mean a default. It doesn't mean any rollover risk or solvency. So then it comes the big question about, from a profit habitat perspective, where will investors you know, invest in a rising yield environment? Will they favor five years, 10 year, or longer dated papers? So that's a bit the biggest question you, know, you, might, you might see. Clearly, we've seen in the past especially in the last two to three years, that when you see yields going up or the, the treasury curve steepening, the credit curve steepened too. So that may also lead investors to be more precautionous. And you might not freeze your cost of funding as, as, as an issuer and, and people will tend to buy short dated papers, you know, five to 10 year paper and avoid the long end. So that's a consequence, you know, of potentially, you know, high yields. Your question on, on Argentina being kind of excluded from the international capital markets uh, must be, you know, answered too. Clearly, Argentina has come back into 
the emerging market bond indices. And if you look at the flows, the fund flows that hit our asset class this year, a significant portion has gone into ETFs. And ETFs replicate the benchmarks. So Argentina has already benefited from the flows that went into, into, into ETFs. I don't think that the dedicated emerging market community is underweighted Argentina. And if you look at the size of the inflow this year, Argentina benefited significantly for this trend and the vibe behind emerging market. So I don't think that Argentina over the last nine to 15 months uh, benefited from the, the mistakes of the past and Argentina has been a bit, you know, the, the favor uh, or the flavor of the year. And it seems to me that the technicals were quite supportive. 